Hi, my name's Lily and welcome back to Small Talk. So I am speaking to you from uh, lockdown in Spain. I live in Barcelona. So, um, and we've started to get some good news. So I wanted to jump on here, do a little video about where I've been at in my own journey with lockdown and also what to expect next. I thought that because the government here has now announced um, how exactly easing lockdown measures will go in various phases. I think it's very interesting for anybody who is going in a lockdown in their own country or the place where they live to understand how somebody who is a little bit further down the line than they are or who has been in a more extreme lockdown or situation, how it's being handled, manage your expectations, whatever, catch up with each other, see how we are. I don't have anyone else to talk to. Oh no, I do, I have housemates, but we're bored of each other. Um, anyway. Uh, I have um, been doing quite well. Um, I haven't been sleeping so well, but I think it's just hard because um, if you know about the lockdown in Spain, we haven't been allowed out. We're only allowed to go to the supermarket or to the pharmacy and it has to be very close to our house. So actually spending uh, two months without going for a walk, um, it's pretty difficult. We live in apartments, so also there is, there's a lot more feelings of going stir crazy and um, I'm living abroad away from my family and my uh, support network, so that has had been challenging at times. Um, I want to say though that um, at the moment I'm feeling overwhelming feelings of relief. Um, I can't describe, I mean you'll be going through it as well, I'm, I'm going to talk about it from my own experience, just give this human element to a politics conversation, <laughs> but I really honestly believe that um, it has taken a toll on people to wake up every single day with just horrendous news stories, you know, close to a thousand people dying in 24 hour periods. It was a harrowing period, um, especially those peak days, those peak weeks, and also just the, 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 the constant extensions. I've had probably low level anxiety or feeling quite tight and things because you just don't know if you're going to wake up one Sunday and there's going to be in a press conference and they're going to say, listen, because of the... ICUs being overwhelmed because of everything else we need to extend it again. This happened, what, three or four times? <laughs> I can't even remember. Um, and suddenly, I don't know when, but it just seems like now we're talking with hope. We're talking about the end of the, the light at the end of the tunnel. We're talking about release. And I'm gonna get emotional again. I got really emotional this morning because I can't describe how, I didn't expect it to affect me in the way that it has, but I just feel, so relieved and I feel overwhelmed and happy and excited about um, the future. Now, obviously there are, will be cynics out there and I know that we are probably gonna be under lockdown again in the future and we don't know what this will look like. And I don't want to um, gloss over how tragic this has been, especially for people who have had close contact with anybody um, who has suffered from coronavirus or has passed away. And also the people who have been fighting on the front line um, healthcare workers and key workers and everybody else. But that's just my emotional reaction to this and I, and I wanted to share it to be um, genuine. Uh, and also because I almost cried there, so that was pretty genuine. Uh, in other news, I have had a little tragedy. Um, I finally lost two nails. There you go. So I've got stumpies here. I've got one very beautiful hand and one, I don't know quite how to describe this hand. So if anyone thinks of a way to describe this hand, stick it in the comments. Um, so yeah. I'm going to talk a little bit about the phases, how it's going to work. Um, please, if you want to see me again, don't forget to subscribe, click the bell, it gives you a notification to see when my next video is, um, and um, give me a like, because it helps, give me a like. Um, so, desconfinamiento, <laughs> deconfinement in Spanish, desconfinamiento. Desconfinamiento, desconfinamiento. There we go. So how's it going to look? Well, basically, it's in phases. We've been told it's going to be in phases. The other thing is that there are not fixed dates, which actually I feel better about. It's sort of like giving us false promise and saying, oh, by this date, you'll be able to do this. It's like, listen, we are talking about the future. We are dreaming of the future, but we are not in the future yet. You know, we're not there. So it's all contingent on how, uh, whether there's an upsurge of the virus, which we hope not. So there's no fixed dates. And also the other thing that the, um, the other thing that Sanchez, who's uh, the president of the government here, what he said is that it's gonna be asymmetrical between regions. So for example, Madrid, and Catalonia, which have been where I live, which have been two of the worst hit regions. I think that we have to expect that our 
deconfinement process, our easing of lockdown process is going to take a little bit longer than some of the other regions. Um, he says that ideally, or what they've planned, is that this ease of lockdown will last between six to eight weeks. <sighs> okay, so... Um, we also have some great news because daily corona deaths have fallen to 268, which is the lowest since the 20th of March. So even that, just being in lower numbers, even though it's terrible that people are still dying, it's just, I, I, I don't know, this hope, hope and optimism, they go a long way, okay? They really go a long way. Um, right, so right now we are in phase zero. So phase zero is what we've been in and um, actually last weekend... Um, kids were allowed out last Sunday and even though there were pictures of you know families breaching um, social distancing rules in the end it kind of just looks like it they were their own families huddled around each other and actually the government says that they cannot report any like clear abuses of of the guidelines so actually they are apparently reassured that people understand their responsibilities after last weekend so What's going to happen this weekend is that the rest of us are going to be allowed out for walks and exercise. I don't think I've ever been more excited to walk in my life. Um, now, the way they're going to do it is that it's been announced today. It's going to be time slots. So if you live here, you need to look up what your time slots is going to be. But it's going to be elderly people at some point. It's going to be sort of young single people or couples without families. Uh, at another time, in, I think it's in the evening or in the morning, and then it's going to be families in the afternoon, as far as I'm aware, but double check it, because I was uh, making this when they've been announcing it, basically. <laughs> um, okay, so that is phase one, okay? So that is phase, no, no, that was phase zero, sorry, we're still in phase zero. Now, phase one is going to start on May 10th, and this is also why I have got very, very excited, because we have been in this situation where everything's being put off, put off, put off. I thought that I was maybe not going to be able to see a friend or have, you know, contact with somebody um, until June or something, you know, because in the end, when you keep on having things pushed away from you, you sort of sink into having very low expectations. Um, so from the May 10th, um, people will be able to uh, go to cafes. Now it's ca terraces, like sidewalk ca um, cafes, like if a, if a bar or cafe has something on the street where you can sit, then you're able to go there. And that's gonna be at 30% capacity. So I think this is something that you should look at, that places where it's kind of safe for people to go, that is gonna be allowed. Hotels will be able to open, but not any common areas. So things like a buffet, um, not going to be okay, but they will be open. But then again, I don't know who's going to be visiting them because we're not really allowed to travel. Um, also, Key will be able to visit friends and family in each other's homes. I'm really excited about that because I want to see my closest friends. I've missed them a hell of a load. So, um, also important for Spanish people, but not really that relevant for other people because everybody here has a second residence. So you're going to be able to travel to your second residence if it's in the same province. But any movement around the country that's not in the same province is not going to be allowed until June. So that's key. I mean, we're allowed to move around our city and we're allowed to have contact with people who aren't infected and aren't vulnerable, but we're not going to be able to like move around as freely as that. I'm only going through the brief bits. I will include um, information in the uh, description. I'll include links if you want to look up more, look at it in detail, just the key points. So then phase two, there are no dates but when phase two arrives, basically, instead of being outside ca cafes and restaurants, citizens will be able to be inside, but again, at 30% capacity. I think that this 30% is going to be something that's everywhere, so it's very important. Cinemas and theatres, exhibition areas, things like that can also reopen, again, at 30%. Um, and then, apparently, we're even going to be allowed to go to cultural events, like things like concerts, um, stuff like that. But again, at 30%, and if it's outdoor, it's a maximum capacity of 400 or something, and everybody has to be sitting down. So, I don't know, it's good. I mean, when you've had everything taken away, the little few things that come through, you're like, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. So, you know, but then again, I am sometimes get overly excited about stuff. Um, then, interestingly, schools will open for children under the age of six if their parents are have to work and, you know, they, they need sort of like childcare. Um, but, oh, and universities will open so that students can take their exams um, and their entrance exams. 
but schools themselves in Spain will not open again until September. So I think that's something that's going to be Europe wide. So possibly interesting for wherever you are. Then phase three. So phase three will see the relaxation of mobility restrictions. So we'll be able to move around a lot more freely and we have to wear masks, but that's a recommendation. They say that it's not going to be like enforced. It's going to be recommendation, which is interesting, but it looks like even right now, most people are wearing masks. So I don't think that's going to change much. Um, now they say that this phase is likely going to be implemented in mid June. Um, it will allow for visits finally to senior homes, to the elderly, to the more vulnerable populations, which have been protected up until now. So, you know, that's key to point out that it's up until mid June. We're not, um getting the most at risk populations involved in this so this again might happen in where you are now um bars will be able to open at 50 percent so there we go we've increased capacity to 50 percent and shoppers will be able to go into establishments as well at limited capacity and have to um everyone's going to have to observe social distancing of two meters as well so like social distancing stays now, something that is kind of maybe a little bit unnerving is that they're calling this the new normal, which I think was Primavera Sound's uh, slogan this year until it got cancelled. So thanks, Primavera Sound, for bringing coronavirus with your slogan. Um, anyway, this is this last stage and kind of beyond this is being called the new normal, which is essentially getting us ready for the fact that things are not really going back to normal, but this is all we can have until like there's a vaccine, until coronavirus is not spreading through the community essentially. So they say that moves between provinces, so that's moving around the country, will happen in this final stage. But it will be contingent on two regions having like met the same conditions. So for example, if Madrid or Catalonia are still struggling, we probably will not be able to move to other regions. It would have to be like two regions who are doing okay. So say like Ibiza and the Balearic Islands and Andalusia, well, they can move between each other, but we can't move to them, if that makes sense. Um, and interestingly, we have no idea about national or international flights. So no information on that. And um, if you're watching from the UK, I think that your strategies are gonna start coming out. Um, so there you go. I don't really have anything else to give you. Not the most exciting video in the world, but anyway, uh, probably interesting. So what I'd like to know from you is, if you're in Spain, do you think that the strategy is being communicated well? Do you feel uh, optimistic? Do you feel like it's enough? I do feel like it's a very hard thing to do, to plan how to release people, managing, you know, numbers going into hospitals. And that's the other thing. This could all be delayed if suddenly we have a big upsurge and that's something that we've got to ex um, accept. If you're in another country, do you feel your government has been communicating enough? What would you want to see from a strategy? Do you think this is going to happen in your country? Do you have any predictions on how it would be different? I'd love to hear from you. And how are you doing? How are you feeling? Uh, since I have rabbited on how about how I'm feeling. Um, anyway, again, I make lots of videos on politics. Please join me again. Give me a subscribe. I'd love to see you. And um, I am going to make a video about uh, the UK situation. It's just, I feel like a load of things are happening. I mean, baby and um, we've over the peak of coronavirus, but also maybe having some of the worst deaths in Europe. Like there's a lot of stuff going on. I want to get into it. I don't want to give you a crappy product, um, but that's that. Thank you so much for joining me and uh, stay safe and I uh, hope you're well and see you on the next one.